Wouldn't it be great if you could invest in property as easily as you do stocks and shares? Well, that's the promise of property investment funds. But are they right for you? Find out the pros and the cons in this video. When you think about investing in property, you probably think of buy to let. That's what most people do. But there is another way of investing. You could also invest in property via a fund. But what are property funds? How do they work? And how do you know if investing in one is going to be right for you? That's what we're going to explain in this video. So let's start off with the obvious. What is a property fund? Well, a property fund is a way of buying a small piece of a large portfolio that someone else manages. Think of the fund as a, as a wrapper around the property portfolio. The property in the fund just does what property normally does. It's rented out for income and it goes up or down in value. You don't get to choose what you invest in, but when you buy a share, you get exposure to all the property that's already in the fund and anything else the fund decides to buy in the future. So that means that if you buy 1% of the shares of a property fund, then you're entitled to 1% of all the rental profits after all the costs. And it means that your share will rise or fall in value based on the value of the property and the performance of the fund. So why would you invest in a property fund instead of doing it yourself? Well, there are a few reasons. A big one is diversification. The fund may hold potentially hundreds or thousands of properties. Whereas if you're investing on your own, you might only ever be able to buy a handful. That means you're always going to be able to spread your bets and potentially reduce your risk more with a fund than you would by buying on your own. Also, the fund makes investments that you could never make on your own. You wouldn't be able to buy a shopping centre by yourself or a logistics warehouse or a block of 100 apartments, but a fund can. Also, no mortgage is needed. The fund might decide to use leverage, but you don't have to arrange it. You don't have to go through that hassle. And in general, there is just no hassle. In a property fund, it's 100% hands off. You couldn't get involved even if you wanted to. You don't have to arrange mortgages, you don't have to deal with solicitors, you don't have to deal with management, and you probably wouldn't be welcomed if you started trying to do those things. So the term passive investment gets used a lot, but this really is a completely hands off investment. And you don't need to save up as much money to get started. The entry point to get into these funds is a lot lower. It may be as low as £100. Whereas with buy to let, really, you need about £30,000 to get started. So it allows people to get exposure to property, the potential capital growth and the rental return without having to commit thousands and thousands of pounds. You can put larger amounts in if you want to, but you can start with a lot less in the beginning. So lots of benefits to investing in property via a fund, but clearly it's not perfect because no way of investing is. So why might you not want to invest through a fund? Well, you don't have control. Of course, you have the control of whether you want to go in or out of the fund, but you don't have control of what's happening within the fund. So you may enjoy the idea of your fund being looked after day and night while you're asleep, but some people love to be hands-on. They like to get stuck in and they want to dedicate their time to running a portfolio. So if you're that type of person, it might not be for you. There's also an extra layer of costs before the profits are calculated. So running the fund itself costs some money and you'll be charged that. And those charges will be deducted before the rental profits are paid out. Another potential drawback is that you might not be able to sell when you want to or get the price that you want to for your shares. Now, there are two types of property fund, open-ended and closed-ended. If the fund is open-ended, then what that means is that in theory, you'll always be able to sell. The fund has to try to honor your request. But if too many people want to sell at once, then the only way it can do that is by selling property. And if you need to sell property quickly, it's usually at a discount. So that means that your shares become worth less. In practice, open-ended funds often get gated to prevent this happening because it's not in the best interests of remaining investors for property to have to be sold quickly. So even in an open-ended fund, you're not guaranteed to be able to sell when you want to. The other type of fund is closed-ended. And that means that you can only sell if there's a willing buyer for your shares. So if too many people want to sell at the same time, the price of the shares might have to drop to attract new buyers, or there might not be a buyer at all. So even though selling your shares in a property fund is far, far easier than selling a buy-to-let property, it's not necessarily instant or guaranteed. Another thing is the price movement is more obvious. You can see the share price move every month or every minute, depending on the type of fund you invest in. Whereas with buy to let, you only really know what it's worth on the rare occasions you get it valued. While some people may enjoy keeping an eye on how their investment's performing on a regular basis, it may make some people nervous. And because it's easier to buy or sell, you may overtrade, where it's often best to do nothing at all. And because it's easier to buy and sell, you may be tempted to sell your shares of the portfolio 
at a point when it's not attractive to do so, because it's easy to do so, where often it's normally best to just wait and do nothing at all. Property investment, after all, is a long-term investment. And the final reason why you might not want to invest in a property fund sounds like a silly one, but it's actually quite an important reason. Most funds are a bit boring. If all your fund gives you is a fact sheet every quarter, which is what most of them do, then you don't feel like a property investor. Even though you have the exposure to rental income and the potential for capital growth that you would have if you owned a property yourself. You just don't get that emotional experience. You don't feel connected to the properties that you own. And while if you were a robot when all you cared about was numbers, that wouldn't be a problem. In reality, for many people, part of the attraction of property is that it's interesting and it's exciting. And if your portfolio just becomes a few numbers on a screen, then, well, you're not getting the full experience of being a property investor. There are some funds that do a good job of making you feel like the property investor that you really are, but they are few and far between. So who are funds right for? Well, somebody without enough cash to start a buy-to-let may be very tempted to invest in a fund. Why wait until you've got 20, 30, 40 thousand pounds or more before you get going on your property journey? With a property fund, you can start straight away. It might also be attractive to somebody who's not really that into property. They prefer other asset classes, but they want some kind of allocation to property. But that allocation is not enough to justify them becoming an expert in the whole sector, going through all the hassle of arranging mortgages and everything that goes along with being an investor. Investing through a fund would allow that person to get exposure to the benefits of property without having to go through all those other steps. It will also benefit someone who wants to be diversified. If you put a significant sum of money into one property, your diversification is, well, limited to that one property. You could put that same amount of money into a property fund and then have exposure to hundreds, if not thousands of properties. So a property fund does help you diversify, which could reduce your risk. It'll also be attractive to somebody who's time poor. We've never made a secret of the fact that property takes up time. Even if you take a hands-off approach, there's still work to be done. And if you're somebody who's busy, who works long hours, or just has other things that they want to do, then finding a way of having somebody else do all that may well be attractive. Funds are also right for people who are just happy to be hands-off. Some people are control freaks and like to know everything that's happening with their property at any moment in time. But other people are quite happy for someone else to run things for them. So if being hands-off sounds appealing to you, then a fund might be right for you too. So if you think that you might be interested in investing through a property fund, then there are some things that you need to consider. The first is to decide what subset of property you want exposure to. So there are funds that invest in family houses. There are funds that invest in student accommodation. There are funds that invest in shopping centers. There are funds that invest in just about every type of property you can imagine. They're all called property funds, but in reality, they're all completely different because each of those types of property has different characteristics. You need to start by deciding what type of property you want exposure to, and then go looking for funds that invest in that type of property. Look at the fund manager's performance and credentials. You won't be making the decision, so you need to trust the people that will be making them. Are they people that you believe in? Also, you want to look at the dividend yield. Don't be totally guided by it. Just like buying a buy-to-let, the rental income is only part of the equation. Potential capital growth is really important too. So putting it all together, where do funds fit into the overall landscape of property investment? Well, the first thing to say is that funds aren't better or worse than buy-to-let. It just depends on your situation as an investor. If you don't have the time or the desire to do it yourself, and you're willing to put your trust in someone else to make the decisions, then it can be great. It could also be a great way to get into property for somebody who lacks the funds to buy a whole property for themselves or who struggle to get mortgages at attractive rates. If you still want the benefit of leverage, then just pick a fund that uses leverage and you don't have to arrange it yourself. But it's not for everyone. Some people prefer buy to let, and that's fine. Personally, we do both. But we can't cover everything here. We've given you a good starting point, but make sure you do your own research before making any investments. That's whether it's a buy to let or investing in a fund. And if this does sound interesting to you, then you might want to check out the fund that we've launched. You can find out more at portfolio.co.uk.